Hey guys, welcome to Fringe FM Tech Talks. I'm your host, Matt Ward, angel investor, serial entrepreneur, and guy who's here to guide you through the future. Today we're talking driverless cars, going zoom zoom, and exploring getting behind the wheel when there is no wheel. And now, cue the intro. So one of the most impactful inventions of all time is going to be driverless vehicles. The ability to get to A from B without having to drive, move, or think about it. So vehicles alone were something that upended the entire world. We suddenly had cities, we had suburbs, and if you look even just at the difference between European and American or, or North American homes and cities, we see major, major differences in terms of where people are living, how they're living, and what the structure of cities looks like. That's the physical location getting upended merely from vehicles. But we've had cars around for a long, long time now. It's been a bit over 100 years. And we've had experiments in self-driving cars since the 1920s. But fast forwarding to today, it hasn't really been possible and doable to create fully functional autonomous vehicles until today, now that we have advances in AI, uh, GPUs, the, the processors used for video games, cryptocurrency, and AI have made things very, very powerful in terms of running simulations, and then advances in computer vision, along with uh, the machine learning, neural nets, and other other aspects or other, other terms that get lumped under AI have made things interesting and have made autonomous vehicles possible. So, oh, sorry about jumping into the intro again. So we fast forwarded to today, and today we have a lot of people interested in autonomous vehicles. So transportation is an enormous market. This is one of hands down the most important and valuable markets in the world. And it makes a lot of sense that companies like Google and who's running via Waymo, Tesla, GM who acquired Cruise for a billion dollars, Ford, and a lot of other companies are working really, really hard to win this autonomous vehicle race. There will be so much that goes into us being able to move around without having to think about it, without having to own a vehicle, and what goes on in the in the passenger seats of these autonomous vehicles that everyone knows that it's going to be something incredibly interesting. Tesla's really revolutionized this. They've shipped 280,000 vehicles to date. They got started in 2015 with the first self-driving vehicles, and since then everyone has been running to catch up. Now, while we're doing the overviews of self-driving cars, let's do some definitions. Level zero, that's a normal car. Level zero autonomy. You're driving, a car does nothing for you. Level one, that's mainly done by the driver, but a lot of us have cruise control in our cars or something else. Well, that's level one type autonomy where you have some type of enhancements. Level two autonomy is where we're helping with two different things, acceleration and steering. So maybe you have lane control, so it's able to keep you in a certain lane and it's able to do cruise control. Level three autonomy, this is where cars are doing most of the things and human beings are monitoring what's happening. We're looking around to make sure, okay, it looks like we're not gonna get in an accident. I have to be here, I have to be by the wheel holding on or at the very least paying attention, but things seem to be going okay and the car seems to have it under control. Level four, this is considered fully autonomous. This covers most everything except for the edge cases. So with autonomous vehicles, with AI in general, we get trained on what's called data sets. There's different things that are going on. So looking at images to try to identify animals, etc. Looking at vehicle situations, driving around Waymo and other autonomous vehicles have done millions of miles around the world. They've covered it over and over and over. Well, this is level four autonomy where we can handle pretty much everything. And then there's level five autonomy that covers quite literally everything, even situations that have not been previously trained upon. Again, this is Fringe FM Tech Talks. We're doing live streams. I'm your host, Matt Ward. If you're just tuning in, we have a, a live chat. If you go to fringe.fm slash YouTube, you can check out, join our live stream and add any questions, etc., that you guys have in there. So make sure you do that. We'll have live Q&A towards the end, but add your questions in and we'll make sure not to miss them. So when it comes to autonomy, there are several different approaches. There's two main approaches. There's one that focuses on the car and there's one that focuses on a system. So the car focus would be running with cameras, sensors, etc., and looking at what's happening right now. This is how human beings work. We see what's happening and we react. The secondary approach would be a network type approach, a LIDAR or network intelligence. And this is how bees work. They're able to communicate between themselves and have co an emergent type behavior where they function really, really well. And this is something, both of these approaches are being focused on and being tried. Again, this is our live stream. So if you guys have questions, make sure you add those in YouTube, fringe.fm slash YouTube. Any questions, put those in there and we'll answer them towards the end. 
Now we're jumping into the implications. The implications of self-driving are enormous. First, let's talk about the obvious stuff, commuting. Commuting sucks. People like driving to work, never. So in terms of that, obviously being able to free people up from what they have to do, they don't have to hold the steering wheel, being stressed out in traffic. They're able to focus on things that they wanna do. They're learning, they're listening to books, they're playing weird games on their phones. Well, with expanded ability to commute, maybe people are living further from cities. San Francisco is incredibly expensive because all the developers are there, all the money's there. People have to live outside the city. Well, suddenly maybe a two hour commute's not that bad. If the, on the way there, you're working anyways, you're making phone calls, you're watching Game of Thrones, you're reading a book, you're learning, you're meditating, etc. All of these things can make life a little bit more tenable when you have to be commuting. So that could be something that's really interesting is looking at the, the real estate prices that are outside of major cities. Those will start to increase, I imagine, as people start to move outside of the major cities and want a little bit more of a suburban life. Reducing traffic and emissions, hopefully. So uh, the big problem, the big cause of traffic jams are people braking. People don't know what other people are going to do and if they see someone hit the brakes, they hit the brakes and then they hit the brakes and everyone becomes a chain reaction where suddenly you've got a mile of traffic backed up and tons of emissions, tons of lost uh, productivity just from people getting stuck in meaningless traffic. Well, with a networked type intelligence, with a LiDAR type system, we're able to eliminate that for self-driving cars because they know when the next car is gonna break and when the next car is gonna break and if we do have situations where we need to slow down, we all slow down in concurrence with each other so that we're able to, rather than go down to five miles an hour, we can all maintain 55 miles an hour without a problem. We can be closer, there's gonna be less accidents. There's 1.3 million needless deaths per year due to automotive injury of some kind. It's one of the top 10 leading causes of death worldwide. Well, autonomous vehicles, that gets rid of the ability for drunk driving, that gets rid of the ability for crashing from texting. Jesus, you're driving around and you see people on their phones and it's like, come on, man, you're on your phone after all of this when being on your phone is just as bad as being drunk while driving. Are you really going to do that with other people, with kids in your car, with other people on the road? What a, oh, that gets me, that gets me wild and uh, riled up. Driving, it makes you stressful, just like thinking about fucking people texting while they're driving. It's incredibly stressful. But being able to focus on things that matter, being able to focus on improving yourself while driving, well, that makes things a lot more interesting. Heck, you can sleep your way into a new city. I've got to, I've got to head over there to Chicago, and I've got to be there by tomorrow. Well, you know what? I don't have to take a plane. I can go. I can hop in a car. I can have a nice meal, watch a movie, relax, fall asleep, and my car just drives me there. That's pretty cool. It kind of completely upends what it means to be in a car. Cars are going to have to be redesigned, by the way, so, because who's going to want to be sitting in a normal type car when suddenly you don't have to drive, you don't have to be paying attention to traffic, you can be doing whatever you want. That will make the entire car experience completely transformed. Tesla's working on this now, but it still looks like a car, it still looks like a car on the inside, and it still pretty much is just something to get you from A to B. It'll be interesting once that becomes even more something than just a, just a transportation vehicle. Other obvious implications, obviously people are going to lose their jobs. If you're a truck driver, if you're an Uber driver, I'm sorry, but you're going to start being automated. That's, it's just kind of what it is. If you're angry or upset with me, connect on social. At It's Matt Ward, you can find Fringe FM podcast on Facebook, or you can find us on YouTube, fringe.fm slash YouTube. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any of these. Every Wednesday and Sunday at 12.30 p.m. EST, we're doing live streams with all the listeners. Anyone who's curious, any has any questions, etc., add your questions over there, and we will answer those live on the live stream. But yes, automation, specifically driverless cars, will eliminate a lot of jobs, but they're going to create some other jobs as well. Look at food trucks. We have food trucks where maybe you can't afford to own, open a restaurant or you want to do it a bit different. Well, now we have tons of food trucks all around the U.S., specifically in the in the more hipster type areas that are a little bit more economically successful, but they've created a new way to work, a new way to sell food, and it's pretty darn exciting. Well, we're going to see really similar stuff when it comes to autonomous vehicles. Let's see, some other obvious implications. So <laughs> parking lots, Um, yeah. What's the point of a parking lot if you don't need to park when you have autonomous vehicles? So right now, cars are used around 5% of the time. That means if we have a car, roughly it can service 20 people. Obviously, it doesn't totally work out because there's peak demand. There's not a lot of people that are using their car at 3 or 4 a.m. But still, there's a massive multiplying effect. We need way less cars on the road. We need way less storage space. We need way less parking lots. What do we do with all those parking lots? Community gardens? Farms? I think those could be pretty interesting, especially as we cut down on the pollution and we have more space for people to just be people. 
the entire supply chain is going to be disrupted. I don't really care about owning a car. I'm not sure if many of you guys do, but with Uber and with the advent as we're moving towards autonomous vehicles, it becomes less and less. I want to get from A to B. I want it to be cheap. I want it to be fast. I don't care whose car it is. I don't care what it looks like. I just want to be there. So we'll have fleet providers. Maybe these will be companies. Maybe these will be cities or governments, or maybe this will be individual owners that are leasing out their cars on an Uber type system that has autonomous vehicles. I don't really know, but there's a lot of changes that are coming when it comes to that, that side of things. But those are just the obvious ones. Let's talk about the not so obvious ones. So we said a little bit before, but suddenly you're not going to need retail space as much. You can just go and create a business. You drive around to where you need to be. Maybe you're selling, I don't know, prom dresses and you're driving around to different proms or high schools around the country and selling your stuff. You don't have to be online per se. It changes things a lot. You can have a doctor that comes to pick you up and he does your appointment while you're driving from city A to city B so that you don't have to worry about wasting time on the commute. You can hop in the car and have a five-star chef cook you a meal. Maybe it's a robotic chef that just drives up and drops you a burger. But hopefully it's not a McDonald's burger or your waist isn't going to be happy. You can sleep your way into a new city. What about with truck stops and uh, towns in general? So if you look at the U.S., if you look at most countries, between big cities you have small little stops small little towns and villages. Those are mainly fueling stations for truckers. This is where they go to get their food, to get all sorts of things. There's hotels, there's bars, there's strip clubs. There's all of these things that are built around servicing these truckers who are starting to very quickly go away. They're one of the easiest jobs to automate. Well, what happens to all of these towns and little cities that aren't big cities when suddenly all of their business is gone seemingly overnight? I don't think that they're going to be that happy about it, but I also don't think they're going to be able to say all that much about it because it's just going to happen. You want to travel farther easier? Well, people probably will. There's going to be a lot of sitting without exercising. That's not a good thing. If you're in your car driving two, four hours commuting each way or each day, that's a lot of sitting. Sitting is not good for you. They say sitting's the new smoking, and obviously this is a bit overdoing it just to have some type of impact but sitting is very freaking bad for you it's not good look at look historically when did people sit not very often unless they were getting ready to die so being up and being active is very important and it's something that if we if we keep uh if we keep our current work schedules but we just add commuting on top of that that can become very very problematic another problem is being isolated so Typically, you're living in either an American-type city where you're driving a car everywhere, or you're living in a a European-type city where there's public transit and you see people. And I would certainly argue that that's a better, more fun one. But either way, there's a lot of people that are living in cities that are driven by cars. And as driverless vehicles become more and more prevalent, we're going to have less and less of a need to be with other people. We can hop in the car, get where we're going, bounce between A and B, and not really even have to see anyone. That's probably not good. People are designed to be social creatures. What's going to happen as we are less and less social in a world where we have VR, AR, we're in our cars, we're watching Netflix, we're doing all of these things and not really paying attention to what it means to be alive or what it means to have relationships. Subscribe to the podcast. If you haven't already, fringe.fm slash iTunes slash Stitcher, Android, etc. You can find us in all the major podcasting apps. Would really like if you would subscribe and leave a review if you like this. This is the live stream edition, so Tech Talks. Also, every Monday and Friday, I interview world leaders in the fields of AI, genetic engineering, space, human longevity, quantum computing, you name it. If it's technology that's transforming the future, it's exponential and it's going to affect all of us going forward. We have the world's leaders. It's like a TED Talk, but you know what? It's an hour, an hour and a half long. So we can dive into not just what they're focused on, not just a tiny little aspect. We we can cover the big picture, what it means. How does AI affect genetic engineering? How do genetic tests and personalized medicine affect what it means to be human as we move forward, especially as we jump into space and have to think about different types of computing paradigms? All of these things all come together in an accelerated exponential change. That's what we talk about at fringe.fm. If you check us out, fringe.fm, I'm sure you will like that if you like this. So now let's talk about some of the pros of driverless cars. Obviously, getting rid of manual labor. We don't want people driving with this meaningless, boring jobs that are not really liking their lives. Speaking of lives, 1.3 million people are dying from accidents from cars. Is that really something we really want to keep around? That's kind of like handing people guns and saying, just go for it, which apparently we've done that as well. Increased efficiency, so we're going to start reducing pollution and having less traffic in cities and in urban environments. I mean, if you've ever been in Los Angeles, Atlanta, etc., it's a nightmare trying to drive around. You hate your life, you get stressed, you get angry, because that's what traffic does, as we're able to remove that by removing just, I mean, 
traffic is a function of the number of cars and then the, the de lag or delay time between people's reactions. If we're able to have those reactions instantaneous, we cut out almost all of the traffic, almost all of the stress. A fairer distribution of life. So real estate suddenly becomes more spread out. It doesn't necessarily matter where you're living. You're able to be in different areas around the country, around cities, etc., and still able to have your job get around. You can live in the suburbs if you want to be outdoorsy. You can live in a city and commute to the next city. All of this makes life much easier, much nicer, and with less cars for all of us, a lot less pollutive and negative for our, our life and health and well-being, that's something that's really exciting for me. Business opportunities, absolutely enormous. So the massage parlor that drives around after you, um, you can take that where you will in terms of adult industries, but of course it's going to happen. In terms of moving things around, well, real estate has always been really valuable because it's been the only place to live and conduct business. As we have autonomous vehicles, I mean, we can have buildings that drive themselves around for, for heaven's sakes. It doesn't really matter. And it's certainly something that's doable. So distributing this and making it more of a, a spread out opportunity will be really, really interesting to see the types of businesses that crop up. People driving you around, obvious. Food coming to you, obvious. People delivering products, obvious. But the unobvious situations, the ones that I can't think about and you can't think about right now, that's where the exponential change comes from. With all this free space around cities, life is going to become a lot nicer. We don't need parking lots. What do we do with that? Maybe we grow our food near us so that we have healthier food. We have better access for everyone. We have uh, better, healthier, happier lives. It's not all It's not all roses, however. There are some major cons of driver driverless cars. The first, of course, is going to be the job loss. People are going to freak out. They're going to lose their jobs. What happens when suddenly we have truck drivers that don't have a lot of skills suddenly wanting to figure out how in God's name they survive when their job, their occupation is completely gone? Is it going to be something that makes us further divided or something that can bring us together? That's the question. The question is how society reacts. That's the purpose of Fringe FM. If you haven't subscribed, this is the type of stuff we talk about to try to bring up these really big picture problems so that we can address them before, before they possibly happen and talk about possible negative outcomes for society of people being less connected, people having less work, people having less stuff, less yet more because they're able to get around. They don't need a car necessarily. It becomes really interesting. Let's see. So what are some other cons? Well, what about people not using their time wisely? I know it, it's, it's, it's a bit much to be like someone's parent and say, this is what you should be doing and you're wasting your time watching Game of Thrones or House of Cards, etc. But at the same time, if you look at how people use their phones and what they're doing on a day-to-day -day basis, they're pretty much on their computers. They're on their phones doing things that are they're not adding much value to themselves and they're not adding much value to the world. Now, it's rough to say, but it's pretty true to think about. And that's not something that's great for society if people just have more free time that they're wasting. But, hmm, I wonder what will happen there. What about accidents? So we're going to have driverless car accidents where people get killed. What's going to happen when the first driverless... Well, we've had some accidents already, but what's going to happen when the first driverless car runs over, like, the pregnant mom that's also holding her two twins? How is society going to react when a robot accidentally kill people? I mean, people kill people all the time. We have 1.3 million deaths from automotive accidents every year. But what's going to happen when it's robots? There's going to be major, major backlash that may hold back this technology, this technology with the ability to save lives, reduce pollution, reduce traffic, make all of our lives so much better. Well, that's, that's pretty crappy if something's holding that back, and yet... It's pretty It's pretty obvious that that will happen, and that'll be something that would be really, really hard. If it happens to you, That's it's horrible. You don't want anyone to die. We want to try to avoid that, but accidents are going to happen. Now let's talk about some predictions of driverless cars. And again, if you haven't, if you haven't checked this out on social media, we're at Fringe FM Podcast on Twitter and on Facebook. You can also find me at It's Matt Ward on Twitter. My name's Matt Ward. It turns out there's a lot of white guys named Matt Ward, so we have to go with It's Matt Ward. Now let's talk about predictions. So predictions. We've got some really fun ones, and people always love the predictions, because then in 10, 20 years, etc., you can tell me I was wrong. But I like to jump into predictions, because they make us think about the future in new and unique ways. So driverless is going to happen. That's, that's pretty obvious. I think, and I think many of us think, it will happen first in author authoritarian regimes. So dictatorships, etc., where you can control every variable. So China, Singapore, and to a lesser extent, Korea, places that have less regulation will be able to move much faster when it comes to autonomous vehicles. If somebody dies, you're still able to continue on with running the, running the cars, not having to really worry that much about what people think about this. So they will definitely 
be ahead when it comes to driverless vehicles. That's going to be a big problem for U.S. companies having to deal with the regulations of living and being in the United States. What will happen? Will they start to play overseas to try to avoid these problems or are they going to fall behind? Think about the data. AI is all about data and if these AI companies and these driverless car companies are getting more data in China, etc., well, that's where they're going to have to go. Otherwise, they are not going to be the ones who win this enormous market. The, the vehicle market is one of the biggest markets in the world and this one's going to be a shift that it's unlike any we've ever seen before. What will happen when suddenly the U.S. and other democracies most likely fall behind because they're worried about what people think? Um, combustion engines, I, I would predict they're going to be illegal in 50% of first world countries within the next 15 to 25 years. I would like to say it'll be even more extreme, but we'll have to see. There will probably be some laggards, the U.S. being one, because people have the right to drive their cars and have their guns and all of that fun stuff. But we, we will see what happens there. But I think they'll definitely start to become illegal very quickly. You can see this already in China, as we said. Um, low regulation, high authoritarian strength. They're starting to do this in cities already where combustion engines are illegal and sudden sorry that's how it is and that's great for the environment it's great for people it can cause some problems but it's overall going to be going to be good in terms of predictions on who's going to win my money's on waymo google so waymo is google's autonomous vehicle arm and they've spun that out now but google's done a ton when it comes to autonomous vehicles they're they're one of the leading players currently but they also have google's budget in terms of advertising in terms of growth in different markets, etc. They're starting to roll out autonomous um, autonomous ride sharing, etc. with their Waymo vehicles. I would predict they win just from their AI expertise and their ability to reach scale very quickly. I would say within 10 years, 50% of Americans are not going to own a car. I don't think it makes sense to own a car in today's day and age because as we've said, it's expensive. You just want to get from A to B and you don't really care how it happens as long as you have access to practically ubiquitous transportation, which we do with Uber already, and with autonomous vehicles, this will become even more extreme. Now again, these are our live stream sections. This is Tech Talks. I'm your host, Matt Ward. If you've got questions, anything you want to add, add those right now to the live stream, and I will answer those. We do a YouTube Q&A at the end, so if you go to fringe.fm slash YouTube, you can find our YouTube channel. Be sure to hit that subscribe button and subscribe so that you don't miss any of these in the future, and we'll also be releasing our interview series, which is every Monday and Friday. I have world leaders, tech, TED Talk type folks, but on for an hour, an hour and a half, two hours where we discuss even bigger topics and dive in even deeper into the weeds of what's happening and where we're headed as a species. It's really interesting. It's really fun. If you're interested in space, quantum computing, AI, genetics, robotics, the future of all of us, if you like to experiment, you like to biohack, you like to get into things that make you superhuman, this is the podcast for you. Fringe.fm. Make sure you subscribe. Check us out. We are on iTunes, Stitcher, Android, etc. You can find links in the video. And until next time, it looks like we don't have any questions. Let me double check one last time. No, it looks like we're good. So until next time, I am your host, Matt Ward. And I want to thank you for hopping on this. This has been fun. Make sure that you subscribe. And we will talk to all of you again very soon. Cheers. <laughs>